Good morning, everyone. As I always, place your cross on first, no matter what's going on with your life. You know, I just feel the need to do a video this morning. You know, I may not do this every day, as far as record, but I do this every day. And I'm sure everybody who lives for Christ understands what that means. When you're a follower of Christ, it's a daily routine. You know, it may not mean how you think. You understand? But... It's going to work out. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, it's a lot of confusion out there in regards to the word of God. You know, one thing I didn't realize, though, it's not too many people that can stand on certain concepts that they believe to be true outside the Bible. You know, uh, I've been talking about uh, Geno Jennings uh, for the past few days, and it's something I realized about him, you understand, that he has a certain beliefs that he pushes that are not biblical. You know, I'm not going to go into detail with it. Just pray for yourself and that God reveals the truth to you. You see, people, I'm, I am I love to sp spread the gospel. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But I'm scared to spread it at the same time. It's not that I'm, I hate to scare it, of spread it. I like to spread it because I believe it to be true. And the thing is, the Bible says all the time, Teachers of the word will face the greater condemnation. It's like, <laughs> like, oh Lord, if I if I miss them, you know, whew, that's a scary thing though, to be endowed with the wisdom of the word of God and then to be told throughout the same word that you will face the greater condemnation. So I gotta be careful how I teach people and how I spread the gospel. You understand? You know, I know, I know a lot of people probably think, well, you, you spread the gospel in a way that feels like you can do what you want to do. No, nah, you can't do what you want to do. You know, it's that's not it. You understand? Why I say certain things is because I've received revelation from it, but it's revelation through scripture. You understand? You see, to me, a holy lifestyle involves grace. And the Holy Spirit. You can't be holy on your own. In that case, Jesus didn't have to die on the cross if we can just be holy. Mm -hmm. Only way we can be holy is because of the Spirit that dwells in us. And we gotta hope, make sure that's the Spirit of the Lord that dwells in us. Because we fight against so much different things, you know. If, if we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, sometimes we are disobedient to the Holy Spirit. That goes for me and anybody else. It's not a soul alive that's 100% Holy Spirit filled 100% of the time. We all fall short. You understand? But you know one thing about the Holy Spirit, though? When you mess up, it helps you realize it. It helps you realize where your faults are. Okay, then. Repentance. You understand? That's what the Holy Spirit does. You know, when I was living for the world, you know, I didn't see no wrong with sleeping with multiple women. Saw no wrong with drunkenness. Saw no wrong with nothing. You know, I'm like, whatever. Do what you want to do. That's how I thought. But along came the Holy Spirit. It showed me errors that I didn't see beforehand. And that goes with everybody. And you got to understand something, people, about the Holy Spirit. It works on everybody differently. Because God knows every soul. He knows how to work on this one. And he knows how to work on that one. I don't. You understand? I'm sure he worked on me in a way different from the way he worked on you. You understand? But the thing is, people, it's the same Holy Spirit. You know, I, I was looking at uh, looking up Geno Jennings. And he was saying, everybody who Holy Ghost feel, speak with tongues. That's a lie straight from the depths of hell. When Paul breaks down the different gifts of the church, tongues was one, 
But there were many other proofs that the Holy Spirit works his influence within you. Everybody don't speak with tongues. Now let's put it this way, people. I'm going to tell you something that I come to believe. I remember uh, I started attending the Assembly of God Church and they, they got the same concept. Those who believe were speaking in tongues. You understand? Let me tell you something. I watched a video on them and they used to go to these seminars and they'll make these children just make the people in their church sit through these like seminars to try to get them to fulfill the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you something about trying to force somebody to do something. It's like, take a child who don't like broccoli and you beat it in them. You ain't getting out this table until you eat your broccoli. They got to eat it. But they ain't going to like eating it. Now think about you forcing somebody to do just beating it in the head. You got to have the Holy Spirit. You got to have the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, some people going to fake the phone. That's not how it works. You can't force the Holy, I mean, tongues on somebody. If it ain't in them, it ain't in them. I guarantee you, there's a lot of fakers running around speaking in tongues because they feel that's how it's proof and evident that I'm supposed to speak in tongues. I'm going to tell you why you need to be careful about speaking in tongues. If you read the scripture, it tells you how it works. If somebody speaks in tongue, they got to have an interpreter. Got to have somebody that explains what they say. You understand? Like just saying certain words that don't make sense. Basically, God's saying, there's going to be somebody there who's going to make it make sense. Somebody's going to speak in tongues and somebody going to prophesy. Because a trolling tongue got a, got a lot to do with prophesying, too. Somebody's going to say what they said. Now, a lot of people are like, well, I can interpret myself. How can you prove that? He said, by two or three witnesses, let the words be conformed. Confirmed. Now, think about that. If I can confirm myself, I mean, I can do this. I, I ain't even to imitate it. I'm not even to imitate what they do. But I'll do that and then say what I think it means. So that means you put, I'm putting all trust into me, you got to trust that I'm uh, revealing to you exactly what the Holy Spirit says through myself. That don't work. It makes more sense if you go by scripture. But I see it, I watched him. He's Pentecostal, now remember that. Pentecostal. His church came from the Pentecostal church. Which is kind of like a holiness church. You understand that's kind of crazy, ain't it? You know, when I when I hear about Gino and his calling, I don't like to call people out, but I'm gonna call him out today. He said he received revelation from God that he's gonna start the new church and he's called to start a new church. And his church is gonna be the only true church. That sounds familiar. It's somebody else through history who did the same thing. Joseph Smith of the Mormon church. He said the exact same thing. That he had revelation from God that the church of Latter-day Saints was the holy true church. You see, I see the parallels. So far in my life, people, and I know many other people, God had never taught me to, led me to start a new church. <laughs> never. I never read Revel Revel I never had revelation to be like, Houston, you finna start a new church that's gonna be better than the rest of the churches. That don't make sense. You know, how can I call out other churches? Because every church is saying the same thing. We the only true church. We the true church. Baptists say they the only true church. Pentecostals say they the only true church. A sinner of child God church say they the only true church. Church of Latter-day Saints say they the only true church. I'm gonna tell y'all some people. This is not of God. I don't care what you say. I'm going to tell you how you know. God wants everybody to be on one accord. Now, he did say he's going to bring division. Let's put it this way. He's separating the real and fake. Now, think about the division that God is going to bring. You got goats and you got sheep. You got the narrow road. You got the broad road. 
There's only two types of people in this world, according to Christ. Evil and those who believe. Do you understand? Now, he said, where the divisions come from among you? Envy and strife and all that come from? They come from inside you. That's why a lot of people go to one church, then they're like, well, I'm going to start a church, and I'm going to be better than the other church. Then the other person gets to go to their church, they're like, I'm tired of that church, I'm going to go and start a new church. That's why some of the denominations. Look, at, look through history. Every denomination was started by a man that felt they had revelation to start a new type of church. I'm starting to have the type of revelation that they are all liars. That's dividing the church. Well, pay attention now what I'm telling you. The truth will set you free. Free from what lies. Me personally, I don't cling to no denomination. You understand? I remember when I first found God, I was I had just got filled with the Holy Ghost. I came home. And I, ca I came close to speaking in tongues one time. I remember it. But it was... I remember I was like, whoa, I, I feel something weird. You understand? And I know how it possibly might feel. You understand? But it didn't happen to me that one time. But anyway, it was one of the first churches I went through. I prayed to the Lord. I said, man, so many churches are here. Lead me to a church. So he led me to a similar God church. The two churches I... I became part of was Assembly of God. But yet still, I still noticed things that were wrong. Like you would think God is leading you to a church because it's perfect. No, God leads you to certain places I feel because there's some things he wants you to see. You know, and I'm not knocking no denomination. You understand what I'm saying? I just see issues with everybody trying to start a church. And call it the true one. You know, believe in Christ. That's the true church. That's it. But I really realized that everybody got their certain traditions. Well, if this church don't do that, some churches won't let people in for wearing certain clothes. Some people won't let people in church for this. For that and that. And I'm like, I don't see the majority of churches going by scripture. I see the majority, the majority of them going by what they think and how they think things should be done. You know, so I really don't want to be a part of none of it. I don't want to be. Now, you got to hear what I'm saying. I don't want to be. That doesn't mean that the Lord is not trying to call me to be in the midst of one of these churches. You understand? I don't want to be there. I don't. I really don't, man. <laughs> you know, I just see too much confusion in regards to it. He said, those who worship me must worship me in spirit and truth. I was reading Revelation, I mean, uh, Psalm 119, right? And in certain parts, he's like, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you. So, if you study and show yourself approved, you will become a church. Do you understand what I'm saying? You will become one. You will become a follower of the Holy Bible. That's what it's about. Under all these different names and denominations, they make no sense to me. None. Because all of them think they're better than the rest. Well, that goes back to what I said. It being strikes. And I know, I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to say what Paul says. I don't agree with all the different denominations, but I'm like this. As long as Christ is preached. How about that? As long as Christ is preached. Do I agree with Women preachers, as long as Christ is preached, you understand? They're going to face their own condemnation. The way I look at it, people, if you're Holy Spirit filled and you read that same word that I read, you will repent of the things that he says you can do and can't do through being filled with the Holy Spirit because you got to go by the word of God. You understand? If a woman believes in her heart, she can preach. I'm not going to knock you, but I don't agree with you. Because that doesn't agree with scripture. Do you understand what I'm saying? Go out there and do it. That's why I'm starting to realize when Christ says, there could come a day 
But many people going to come to him in judgment. Now think about this. Now remember according to scripture, everybody who comes to him in judgment, you already know where you're going. I, don't, you, I bet you don't even realize what I just said. You know where you're going if you're facing the judgment seat. Now the reason I come to that analogy or that truth is you say the dead of Christ arise first and everybody else will be caught up with him. Then the judgment. Now really think about it now. Those who are living a life pleased to God, they will not face the judgment seat. Now let's think about this. He said on that day, people are going to come to me, Lord, have not done this, that, 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 your name. He didn't let you. He didn't let you do it in his name. He didn't let you start this new nomination in his name. He didn't let you start this new religion in his name. He didn't let you start these new traditions in his name. And then when you get up there, he's going to be like, I don't know you. I let you do the whole imagination of your heart. I let you start all these different churches, but I don't know you. I let you preach as a woman, but I don't know you. <laughs> Depart from me, ye that work in equity. You better be careful. Because a lot of people even, they ready for the judgment. Uh, not me. <laughs> I don't want to face the judgment. But I know uh, this, through scripture, if you're facing the judgment, you are not getting in. You are not getting in if you're facing the judgment seat of Christ. You see, the saved us are already saved. If you believe with your whole heart and your soul and you live a life pleasing to the Lord, you accept the, uh, you believe that I got a place prepared for you. You believe in all these things. You see, I'm not trying to face the judgment. Some people are still trying to face, when I'm judged that faithful day, uh, nah, I don't want no part of that. <laughs> Let me pause and I will continue.